Hey guys, I was really glad that some of you liked my commentary video, the last one I did. So I decided to do another one and this time I want to do a full modeling session, but this is uh, not in any way prescripted or, or thought through uh, for that matter. So it will be kind of a free creative process. And I was browsing Pinterest to get some inspiration and I really liked these springy uh, positive emotional themes with the rocks uh, around the pond and some tree maybe put some some flowers in there or something like that uh, and again this is not prescripted so I really don't know uh, what the result will be first of all I really want to get rid of the uh, default scene so delete the object and let's lay out the scene a bit uh, I like to start with the with a plane um, which is 8x8 eight eight in size uh, I will hold the control to snap it uh, and again let me activate the shortcuts so you can see what I'm doing right and uh, maybe we can view this as a wireframe so it doesn't get in the way while modeling the other other assets so um, let's do that right now viewport display display as wire and I want to disable it in the outline so it doesn't get in the way but I have a rough estimate of how the scene how large the scene actually will be now I want to do um, rocks which go around and uh, there are multiple ways how to do rocks in blender and I did some in my in my time-lapse videos but most of the time I was just uh, sculpting and then decimating to get the nice triangular shapes but uh, I want to try something different here um, more manual control of how the how the rocks actually look like so um, let's create a cube and uh, scale it a bit um, uh, maybe like this and uh, let's select the face. Ah, first of all, uh, let's move to the cube to the edge of the scene. Select one face, and we'll just make some some round shape. Uh, I'm holding Control and clicking with the right mouse button. So. Okay, this will do nice for some basic layout, and I can I can bridge these two. Uh, bridge edge loops, and uh, let's let's shape it a little bit. So if I look from the side and enable the wireframe view, uh, I can move it up a bit. And first of all, maybe I want um, I want to have um, a really thick, uh, large rocks on the other side. And here I want it to go um, a little bit lower and to have it really subtle. Uh, so first of all. Let's modify, let's modify this. Um, depending on how, how long this will take, um, I may be fast forward. So you don't, don't have to watch the whole process, but basically I'm just uh, selecting vertices and moving them, moving them along. And also I, I want to enable the proportional editing here. So then with the mouse wheel you can control uh, how much uh, how much 
of the polygons you, you affect around the selected polygon. And there is a one method I like uh, when making a rocks and if you go into the vertex mode and select some of the vertices and then control B to um, to bevel and press V uh, to enable the vertex bevel you can now bevel only around that one vertex and if you go around go around your your model and do this here and there. Uh, you can create some really nice mm, random chamfer, chamfer shapes. I think it can give uh, the rocks some really nice stylized look um, without uh, actually doing the, the sculpting or, or decimate. You can then select um, the loop around the whole model and drag it down a bit and maybe make a loop cut. Uh, we can make a loop cut because we actually broke the topology by doing the bubbles but there's an easy way to fix that. You just select this loop and you extrude it down scale on Z to zero and with proportional editing active you can drag it up a bit so you get that nice loop cut there and why I did this uh, it's because I want to select this outer edge and and scale it a little bit outwards and maybe this edge and scale it the other way And try try to bring a little bit of randomness to the whole to the whole object and do some more bevels here and there. Okay, uh, I think this will be enough um, and I want to make another uh, like wall from rocks 
uh, here in the middle. So there will be actually two ponds, and one will be lower and one will be higher up. Um, but uh, this time uh, I want to do more separate shapes than this one. So let's just add um, another cube and block it out a little bit. Uh, real quick. Okay, I, I think this will be enough and let's add the the water levels so we can see the whole scene. So let's add a plane, let's look from the top, go to the edit and grab this. Okay, and let's do another one. Add another plane, drag it around. Okay. I think uh, I, I want the water level to be higher here. Um, let's actually see how it will look on the isometric view uh, let's add the isometric camera and I'm using a plugin called isocam I found this uh, plugin uh, sometime before uh, on the blender wiki uh, but it wasn't updated for a long time and it didn't work on the blender 2.8 so I have written uh, the update for blender 2.8 in Python and I can give you a link in the description below uh, some people asked for this already uh, in my previous videos, so uh, I will provide this plugin for you so you can use it in a Blender 2.8 and it's a really easy plugin. Um, you just you just have this uh, little control and you can create uh, multiple versions of isometric camera and depending uh, on the actual format of the isometric view. And you have the true isocam, which is like a mathematical uh, isometry and then you have the game isometric cam which is the ratio of two to one uh, maybe you know know this view from the games like age of empires or something like that and there is a game iso four to three cam which feels the four to three ratio uh, in the final projection so let's add uh, the game iso game i really like that view or maybe let's try true. Okay, for this actual scene, I will use the true isocam um, because uh, it's more top-down view, and I really want want to. Uh, I really want the water levels to be visible. So let's use this and let's modify the resolution on the on the camera. So it's four to three, and let's move it up a bit, maybe. Okay. So this could be our final layout for the scene. And I really want to make more of the water visible. Okay. And on this side, uh, I will I will need to go much higher up. 
maybe all the way here. But then uh, there are some issues with that, so uh, let's fix them. First of all, we need to we need to fill the fill the gap here. And um, I don't know what the most effective way will be right now, <clears throat> but maybe uh, we can just add another rock here, and it will look uh, more natural to have actually some some rock just sitting there. So uh, let's create a cube slash button and go into the isolate isolate mode. So let's modify this. Mm. Maybe we it'll be a good thing to subdivide this time. Okay, so let's subdivide. Um, but the whole object. And actually, let's try to sculpt this. Uh, we'll just drag around without the topo. I just want to modify the, the low poly structure. And I want to disable the symmetry. Okay. Oh, let's just play with it a bit. Okay, um, I like this, we can try this. Uh, let's move it in place. Some, some nice location for this new rock. Okay, I think this will be good, but for it actually to work we need to Modify, modify the plane. So let's move that. Now let's put it. Okay, I think um, this looks nice and I think here uh, would be a good place to make some some kind of waterfall or something like that and maybe this side is too huge um, actually let's uh, enable the plane which will make it the uh, ground let's put it in the texture mode and let's uh, divide because we will need it later uh, maybe four times will be enough and I extrude down downwards like this okay and um, now I can see uh, the whole rock and the water structure is too large so let's just select the whole all these objects and scale them down a bit move around the place um, but still I think uh, this part is, uh, is too large so let's do something with it
Uh, sometimes uh, you can get a really, really wrong topology uh, from building the vert vertices, so uh, you can be careful around that. Uh, I don't mind right now, really, uh, because uh, this will be a low poly scene. I just want to get it done, so that's that. Okay, um, let's do some more rocks uh, to fill the scene a little bit. So uh, let's add the cube, enter isolation mode, scale it down. Uh, we can subdivide it with a loop cut and then maybe extrude just this part, maybe just this. Let's go to the sculpting. I think uh, when it comes to rocks, uh, there are multiple ways to approach it, but uh, in the end, it's actually about uh, going and looking at the rocks. Uh, so go there, uh, look for some pictures, uh, Google some nature images, and look for uh, different kind of kind of rocks uh, in the nature. So you can get a good grip on uh, how the shapes of rocks can actually look like. Okay, this will be enough. And let's add another one. Okay, we now have um, another two rocks and this will be enough for the whole scene because uh, every time you place a rock you can rotate it any way you want and uh, really make, make some unique placement. And uh, I found out that, uh, let me just modify this first, uh, I found that the best way to do that Uh, I found out the best way to do that is uh, pressing the R twice. So you will enter this trackball rotate mode when you can rotate from side to side and then control the axis rotation with the vertical mouse movement. So you can really make some quick rotations this way. And you don't need to specify the the axis of the rotation all the time. So um, let's move the rock in the scene, let's scale it down a bit. And when you press the R twice, you can really find some nice placement. go to the camera mode. We want the view to be relevant to our final scene. And this is not de so detailed, so it can be used uh, for some smaller, smaller rocks laying around or for some pebbles or something like that, just like this. And when you want to duplicate them, uh, I always use uh, Alt D to make a linked duplicate. Uh, that way, uh, when I apply materials later,
and this way you can create some interesting crevices uh, and stuff so go out play play around and see what you can get out of it i must say i really don't like this this big rock that i created i want to modify it a bit because it really um, doesn't look that good uh, anywhere in the scene well sometimes you just can't get it right on the first time and it's perfectly okay as I said this is not prescriptive uh, I haven't done this scene before and every time I create a rock it's different but I didn't just want to use uh, some pre-made assets that I use in some scenes because uh, I want to give you give you the whole process I think this is much better and I think uh, we can actually can actually use that one here as well Okay, uh, I think it's time uh, to make uh, these objects a little bit smaller again because it still uh, fills the scene too much for my taste. So let's scale it down. I think around here. Maybe not uh, not that much of a scale, but maybe move it a bit too. Right now I want to modify the terrain. And uh, there's really simple way to make the diorama so that the bottom side uh, really uh, has the same geometric shape and I don't modify anything with the proportional editing you just hide the vertices and you modify the top ones but uh, make sure that do you don't go into X or Y direction on uh, this one on the side or maybe you can uh, it can look good to uh, make them go inwards a bit but then you will need uh, some look cut there uh, I will show you in a minute so let's just uh, make some uh, basic terrain shape uh, you can just select uh, any vertex you want enable proportional editing gz uh, make it a really large area of effect or fall off if you will and play with it It doesn't have to be much, just a uh, little bit of a little bit of a terrain, and let's fix some rocks. Some of them got hidden. And the one last thing on the terrain, uh, I like to do a triangulate. So if you go into the face select and triangulate the faces, you will get some uh, really nice effect uh, when you then try to move them, but not with the 
a smooth fall off, but pick the random. And then just a little bit, just a little touch and you can, you will see that uh, these vertices move really interesting and natural, natural ways. And the triangles uh, give it a nice little touch too, so play around with that. And right after you go into the edit, or rather uh, right after you exit the edit mode, you see there is uh, some nice, nice terrain around. And this is starting to look really nice. Oh, okay, and maybe this rock will be pointless there. Okay, I like this. So let's let's make a tree. And right now, I want to create an empty empty vertex. Uh, if you go into the preferences and uh, activate the, I don't know where exactly it is. Uh, let me show you. Um, preferences, add-ons, and I think it's yeah extra objects. So if you activate the extra objects, you can now do a single word, which is very useful because if you if you just want to begin your mesh with one single vertex. Uh, you don't have to create plane and merging vertices or deleting the other vertices. Uh, you just create a single vert. You can go into isolation mode and you can start extruding. So that's um, very useful. Go to the side view and let's by holding the control and clicking the right mouse button extrude some tree shape. I really want to be a branch there looming over and then I want the tree to go a little bit this direction too but not that much and maybe I want this a little bit bigger Okay, and now the now the interesting trick. Uh, I really like the skin modifier for making the trees. If you go to the modifiers and add the skin, first of all, you will get scared. Then press A to select all. And press Ctrl A to scale vertex. Scale all the way down. Now, great. This is more like it, and. We can scale all the way uh, to the width of the trunk in the bottom, but I want to add another vertex. I want to extrude on the z-axis, so it starts flat. And right now, if you go to the wireframe mode, you can select all the all the ending vertices and scale them separately i don't know why this affects oh it's random sorry okay let's switch back to the smooth oh there you are <laughs> the follow was really really large so let's make that smaller and now, control A and modify the branches. Right. And what's cool about this, uh, you can just go and start extruding another branches here. So 
so it's a really fast and cool way how to do branches and there is another another uh, cool trick uh, you can create an armature let me just modify the thickness of the new branches first now let's create the armature but we don't see it because uh, we are in the isolation mode so let's exit that you can see now uh, we have uh, exact, exact uh, armature copying R3 and we just now we just now position the tree however we like that's kind of awesome so uh, let's move the armature with the tree to its position uh, we need to select the object as well move it somewhere here uh, let's scale it like a lot let's go to the camera view and i wanted something something like this uh, but I want the pose of the tree to be different so uh, let's select the armature go into the pose mode and you can now move it along so we can move this whole branch And the best thing is, uh, you still get to modify the thickness of the of the branches if you just go to the vert and click some vertex. You can use Control A to modify the thickness of branches. So you have a really nice low poly organic shape of the tree with full control is amazing in my opinion and one more thing we can do to make the tree look better uh, we can add another modifier we can decimate but first before decimation we want to subdivide so let's press ctrl 1 now it really starts to look like a tree but uh, we are in the really low poly style right now so uh, we don't want uh, the tree to be this round so that's why we can apply the decimate and really get it down to some low triangle polygons if you disable the overlays we have now really nice low poly tree and we have a full control over the thickness and the position of the branches at any time and later you can maybe combine this with um, with particle particle system to uh, create leaves and and flowers and something like that so you can have a really really organic uh, functioning tree um, what i really want to do right now if you look through the camera i want um, let me enable overlay i want the tree to really be much thicker in the bottom
What we need right now uh, is to add some grass to the scene, some leaves to the tree, some flowers and play with the water, give it some materials and stuff. So I will do that. Uh, about the grass, uh, we will use a particle system for the grass. So let's add another cube. Enter isolation mode and scale it all the way down. Now bring this up. Uh, we can move it all the way up here so the pivot point is on the bottom. And uh, let's just make some simple, simple looking tree. Oh, uh, sorry. Simple looking grass. So let's. Oh. Let's merge these four vertices and I think this will be enough for the basic grass. Let's name this grass. And one other thing, sorry um, for my mess in the outline view. Uh, it is a very good practice to name the objects, but sometimes I'm just too lazy to do it. Okay, so we have a grass. And if you go back, uh, you can select the ground, go to the edit mode, select all the top polygons or vertices and make, uh, make contract the selection first. So control minus, let's save this as a vertex group. Um, Let's call it grass, click assign, don't forget that, and go to the particle and create an emitter with the frame start 0, frame 8 and 0, and the source of the emission would be faces, but we'll use uh, in the vertex groups uh, grass for the density. So we have a grass all over the place and actually we will be modified the vertex group later, but uh, let's do it this way first. Now in the render options, we want to render it as an object and we want to use the grass object as an instance. Okay. And I did a mistake, uh, so let me get back to the grass. It's um, much better to do it laying on the ground and around the y-axis. There is a way how to modify that, but uh, every time I mess uh, with the particle systems, I find the best way to do it is just do it along the y-axis. Okay. Now it's facing completely opposite direction. And that may be uh, for number of reasons. The one could be that I have uh, flip normals here. So let's just unhide select all and shift and to make normals consistent oh yeah that was it so the normals were messed up and the grass was growing in the wrong direction so right now we can modify this and i don't want the grass to grow this organically uh, anyway, this is a low poly scene, so I just want a uh, very simple grass. First, I want to modify it so it's much thicker on the bottom. Maybe just like this. So that's the first step to make it look better. And the second thing is uh, I want the rotation to along object y-axis or rather object z okay that's much better and uh, 
Uh, I want a phase, a random phase. So the rotation is different every time. And you can play with the rotation too, later. Uh, if you don't like the uniformity of the grass. But uh, right now I want to do it like this. But I want the scale to be different. So in the render section, let's just randomize the scale. Maybe all the way up. Okay. And what I want to do next is really make the counts of the grass. So it's much, much more grass in the scene. And right now, the one last thing to do is to paint, uh, paint the grass. And I will modify the vertex group I created. So if we go here, uh, first of all, we can hide this again. And uh, second of all, we can remove these vertices from the selection. So you can see there is no grass here. And if you go into the weight paint and you have the grass selected, you can now paint the grass all over the place. That's so satisfying. Right, now let's do some branches for the tree and we'll do this completely manually, uh, no particles or, or stuff. Uh, so go to the single word, add single word, let's go to the isolation mode, let's look from the top and just extrude something. That would be that could be called a branch. So the origin point is here. Now we can move the leaf, scale it down, and move to the origin. And again with the Alt D, we just want to place them manually because uh, last time when I was uh, trying to do this with the particle system. Uh, you can always get the perfect rotation control you would want. And then again, this is a low poly uh, design, so you wouldn't benefit in any way from the particle effects because uh, that's only useful when you need to do like 10,000 leaves on a tree or something like that. And we just need to do some of them. So I think... Uh, the better version right now is 
just to move them along and rotate them manually. One last thing we can do, we can make a collection from this. So let's press M. Wait, I need to go out from the local view. Let's press M. New collection, let's name it branch. Okay. We now have a branch collection. And I can hide it from the view and the render view. But anytime I want that, I can just make a new branch collection instance. Uh, we can now scale this. And again, we'll be positioning this manually uh, around the tree. So but I don't know why the collection actually has the origin in the middle when the branch had the origin at the end. Ah, okay, I maybe know. Uh, let's hide this. Let's show our collection. Ah, yeah. Because it's in the middle of the scene. So if you drag this out here. Okay. origin is correct and let's do it that way we can select the vertex shift snap shift s cursor to select it then when you select the branch you can snap selection to cursor and now if you press double R you can position it however you want so let's Alt D. Now it's time to create some last details, some flowers or something like that. Uh, let's add another plane, but make sure uh, you're uh, in the main collection, because if you had the branch collection active, you would be added there. So be careful about that. We can begin with the plane, go into the isolation mode. I call it the isolation mode, but I think in Blender it's called local view or something like that, but uh, never mind. And let's modify the plane. I'm thinking of what would be the most effective way to create a flower or something like that. But uh, we can maybe move this, scale it, add some loop cuts.
scale them. Scale this inside. Okay. And since we have a cursor in the middle, we can just select all and select the spin tool. We can just drag this around. Make a flower like that. Um, don't forget to click the duplicate checkbox because it would be uh, all messed up if you didn't. Let's do the 360 and 5 or 4. I don't know. I think I, I want to make 5 and right now we can just give it some some shape like this ah so it did a one duplicate we can delete that I think this will be enough for a flower, for some nice low poly flower. And let's exit the local view. I want to place them again without the particle system. So uh, let's use some snapping, uh, activate the snap and maybe select the vertex. Let's see how that works. And let's try to, oh, I think that will be okay. Let's just do the link duplicates again with the snap enabled so they're actually positioned somewhere on the tree. And we can rotate them. I want some of them on the on the water. So duplicate again. And this time snap to the face. And you see it's snapping, but the rotation is all wrong. Uh, but if you check the rotation and projecting elements here in the snap options and you start to drag it around you'll see when it snaps uh, it actually rotates to the orientation of the of the face so that's uh, very useful and i want to do some size variation also And let's do some more on the, on the water surface. I want to rotate them. And if you sometimes look on the leaves or flowers on the water, they are kind of clustering in the crevices uh, so I want to do that here First of all, um, let's set up some rendering and lighting. Uh, I want to add a plane that will work as a backdrop for the whole scene. Turn off snapping. I want the diorama to be placed on that. 
And one more thing, uh, as I said, let's look from the side view. I want the water uh, to have some volume. Okay. Now about the lighting, uh, I really like to work with area lights. It's not realistic, but then again, this is illustration, uh, not a realistic render. So I think the area lights would be a uh, better choice from, from an artistic perspective here. So uh, let's add some of those. And I like to start with uh, one primary light, drag it out and rotate, uh, let's switch the pivot point to 3D cursor and rotate around the x-axis. So let's increase the size, push it out a bit and let's look at the scene. We can enable EV for this, it's very useful for setting up lighting and uh, we can do just some, some settings, uh, we will need to add some light probes for EV, um, some reflection cube map and radiance volume. I did the video on this topic uh, before with the flying car animation so if you didn't watch it and you want to know more about the EV setup go check it out. Now. Uh, Let's change the shading, the scene lights and scene world. And if you disable overlays, you can see what's um, what the lighting looks like, basically. So let's select this, uh, this area light and rotate it a bit. I think um, this would look nice when the shadow of the tree is actually um, going over the water. I think it will make a really cool effect. So let's start with that. And we can maybe add uh, another light, which will, we can just duplicate this one. And this would be for making a reflection on the water. So we, we can go into the much more steeper angle. But it would need to be more subtle. So we would need to decrease the, the strength of the lighting. And uh, again, this has nothing to do with the realism. Uh, outside, you would just have uh, one source of lighting. And if you want realism, uh, obvious choice would be to use HDRs, like here. So you can enable some nice HDRs to preview uh, what that would look like, actually. But... Um, on these low poly scenes, I like to have uh, full control, uh, full creative control uh, over the over the shadows, over the colors of the light and stuff. And I really don't mind um, going all over the place with the lighting. Uh, so sometimes 
I use maybe more than two or three lights. Uh, depends on the scene and what I'm trying to achieve. So it's uh, that. And I also like to play with the color of the lighting. So if we make uh, our primary light uh, a little bit yellow. So as the sun and maybe the other one a little bit more. It can be a very good storytelling tool. So for example, if I maybe wanted uh, to show in the scene that there are, I don't know, cops coming from the side, um, you could just do something like this, you know? But there is a red and blue light from one side uh, and if you don't mix them up too much it can tell some story But one last thing, I want to add some some structure to the water. So we would need to subdivide this. Uh, but first, let me manually slice these to uh, smaller chunks, because then the subdivision doesn't look so good. Now let's subdivide it some more and here as well uh, I made a little mistake here because I didn't subdivide before I extruded so so we have a I think we have a really complex topology here yep uh, let's just fix that Okay, and assign. Okay, let's exit the local view. And we want to ripple the surface, and it's best done with the with the displace modifier. Don't get scared. Uh, we'll need a new texture. Let's call it surface and go to the texture settings and select maybe clouds yay and right now we just need to modify how much how much of the displacement is going on so I'll go back to the modifier and change the strength and back in the texture you can Modify the size, just just to make some some slight um, little ripples, you know, nothing too dramatic, because we want this um, water to be calm and refreshing. Okay, let's look at it here. Okay, this is starting to look nice. If we select the trunk of the tree. Let's give it some material too. Three.
let's now switch to the cycles gpu okay and i want to see the rendered preview and let's play with the lighting We want much much stronger light and if you go from ev to cycles uh, these two lights uh, these lights uh, are compatible in both of these engines but if you create a light in the ev first uh, there's a strength of the lighting in watts actually so when you switch back uh, to the cycles you need to check the use nodes and mm, change the strength to something more of your needs so Uh, one last thing, you can always play with the world lighting and that's cool way how, how you can achieve some, some effects. If you are in the render preview and you start to play with the color of the background, uh, the most important thing is uh, the ambience, ambient light in the scene the one which fills the shadows and the crevices and stuff changes uh, with the color and if you have a bright lighting in the scene um, it doesn't change the whole scene much but that little ambience uh, that little ambience in the shadows and in the crevices uh, can really make the difference so you can play with these settings too and the brightness if you go all the way up on the environment you will see the lights flatten and they don't stand out so the more darker the world is mm, the more the more plastic uh, the lighting becomes on the objects from the area lights So, that's it, um, right now you can just ramp up the samples, enable the noising and save render. That's it guys, so uh, I hope you liked this um, modeling video, uh, if you're new to the channel don't forget to check out my content and if you like it hit that subscribe button and I hope I'll see you on my next videos.